When I first met Keisha, she had never spoken about any of the major events in her life, um, any of the hardships she had been through as a child, any of her experiences and unusual ways of perceiving the world. She was very much like a pearl still hidden in its shell. This women's retreat was sort of the pivotal moment that her journey started. So she told this story that started out very idyllic, very pastoral, um, about how she used to accompany her father when he was delivering calves on the farm, and how the cows would lay their heads in her lap and she would sing to them. And we all sort of got lulled into this very um, gentle, um, blissful kind of place listening to this story. And then all of a sudden, her tone changed and she started to talk about some abuse that happened um, in her in her life she was very shy about mentioning anything about um, her gifts for instance with animals or um, her way of perceiving colors and energies um, things that she would she would hear she had really grown up feeling like kind of a freak um, very different and um, she grew up in a very small religious community where she learned to hide those things in a, in a very, very real way. So I think the, before Keisha became a shaman in 2008, she really had undergone a huge healing process and a huge um, transformation in a lot of ways from who she had been before. It's just been a great blessing to me to be a, a witness to her path and to see this amazing unfolding up until the ceremony that just happened. As I tell the story, uh, the story of going out and living outside in the woods and living with the animals, there was an elk herd that I used to sleep with at night. I still visit that place down at the river that I call mine. I think I own it, but I don't. Um, there was always that safe haven. There was always a very beautiful, safe place for me to run when things got bad. And that place was the river. Going down there always meant two things. It meant I was safe. I was away from other human beings. I was going to Mother Earth and her animals. But it also meant something tragic just happened, so I had to run away. For a long time, I have loved and hated this this place but in reality this is where my gifts were given to me I perceive animals humans everything that is alive a bit different than most I've been visited by many beautiful beings who brought with them divine blessings that's helped me become who I am today Feeling animals was something, was probably one of the first things that I encountered and, and learned how to uh, master just for myself. I could tell where animals were without seeing them because there is a taste and there is a vibration and there is a, a sound and a color, there's a texture. And so say for instance, if there is an elk on the road and anybody that has rode with me in a car um, gets a kick out of this, but if there's an elk on the road two miles ahead in the middle of the night, I can say, please slow down. There's going to be three elk crossing, one bull, two calves, and um, somehow it just happens. Um, it's all of these essen essences put together so that I know where animals are. In learning how to do this, I also learned how to speak with them. It sounds kind of crazy, but Animals do not speak with words, they speak through feeling. And feeling is our divine connection to everything greater than us. 
I was also gifted something in the most uh, tragic part of my life where I was down at the river because life became too hard and terrible things were happening and so I ran away again and as I would stay out there a beautiful being did come to me and I still find it hard to try to put into words what happened that that evening because it was so emotional um, a being came and she rested her hand her palm on on the side of my face and from this moment I started to see things very very differently I could see colors or dots I would call them as a child I could see these colors inside people and when I awoke the next morning I could see these dots in the grass and in the trees and in the elk in the water and talk about a kid that already thinks they're crazy I I thought perhaps I ate something or it took me quite a while to understand that this is just how I was going to see life from now on and so yeah uh, I was quiet I was quiet about many things because I didn't fit in and for a long time being taught lessons by beings that are not human or are not in this existence on this realm um, it's not something I would pipe up and talk about. But when I turned 30, something extraordinary happened, and I got a phone call. Grandmother Lota told me that day that many, many people knew that I was coming to this. It didn't make any sense to me at all. She said that she understood, as well as the other tribal members, that I had been being taught by the grandmother's past. And for the first time in my life, I knew I wasn't nuts. And everything made sense in one phone call. They understood what I was being taught. They understood how I saw things. And she also spoke of a group of people that are here on the planet right now receiving these same lessons. And so all at once, I was not alone. And all at once, I wasn't crazy. And all at once, I had a purpose. They called me to be shaman for the Sioux and the Salish tribes. And I have to say, at first, I was terrified. What a huge responsibility. What a huge commitment. And probably the scariest thing was, if I said yes, I would have to admit to all of my weirdness. I would have to then share with everyone how I saw things. This was very scary for me, but here I am. I am no longer afraid to share my experiences and my lessons taught by the other side. I'm no longer afraid to step forward. And I did commit to being shaman. I did commit to take on these experiences and then to help other human beings learn just who we are and why we are here. And in one year things sped up very, very quickly and I was asked to hold a very sacred ceremony called the Return of the Ancestors Gathering. We proceeded into a, a beautiful life-changing experience for not only myself for, but for those who were on the planet at this time and now we will go ahead and be gathering some of us who were there at the ceremony um, here in the room with us and we would like to express what took place at that ceremony why we had the ceremony and why it was asked by the ancient elders and the Mayan and the Hopi elders to have it come forth at this time.